Hi, we're going to talk about the trend for electron infinity. Now I'd like to give you the definition first and then a related definition. The electron infinity, this is the ability of an atom, so a single atom in its gaseous form, to attract an electron. So we've learned about ionization energy, that is the ability of um, an atom to lose an electron. So how much energy it takes to remove an electron this is the ability for an atom to attract and gain an electron. Now something really, really similar to this is going to be electronegativity. This is the ability of an atom when it's in a compound to attract an electron to itself. So the difference between electron affinity and electronegativity is electron affinity is a single atom in its gaseous form, whereas electronegativity is the atom when it's already in a compound. Um, same principle though, attraction of an electron. So let's look at the generalized trend. Uh, remember we have our anchors on the periodic table um, as we generalize uh, the trends. We're looking at cesium and fluorine. So cesium is going to have the lowest electron affinity or electronegativity, um, and fluorine is going to have the highest. Uh, notice this trend is identical to ionization energy, um, and reasoning behind it, very similar to ionization energy. If we go from left to right, we are increasing effective nuclear charge, um, so the atom's getting smaller, the power of the proton is attracting, attracting as we move from each element to each element, the atom gets a little bit smaller, greater ability for those protons to attract electrons as you go toward the right, toward the right. So because of effective nuclear charge, we also increase that electron affinity. Likewise, from bottom to top, this is going to be Coulomb's law. Um, so you'll recall that the smaller the distance between charges, so proton and electron, the smaller the distance, the greater the potential. Uh, just a little reminder on Coulomb's law, the potential energy is um, the multiplication of the two charges, so positive proton, negative electron, divided by the distance squared, the distance between those charges. So the smaller the distance, the greater the potential. The smaller the denominator, the larger the quotient. Um, so here, as you go up the periodic table, you lose an energy level. Um, so the energy, the valence shell gets smaller and smaller and smaller um, until you get all the way here to the second energy level there's a great attraction between the nucleus the proton and that valence shell the electrons in the second energy level so great ability to attract an electron um see now i do want to give you an example so um electron affinity fluorine for example really really high um electron affinity or um is going to be the electronegativity, really high ability to attract an electron and become a fluoride, fluoride ion, to become the F minus one. If I use the same example for electronegativity, this would be, let's say, hydrofluoric acid. So fluorine by itself, gaseous form, has a great ability to attract an electron and become a fluoride ion. When we have fluorine in a compound, fluorine has a great ability to attract an electron. And so this creates a polar bond where you, the electron that's being shared from hydrogen spends more time on the side of the fluorine atom than for the hydrogen atom. So then we get a polar molecule. So when we have um, a great electronegativity difference between atoms, that's when you get a polar molecule. And there will be more videos on polarity. Just wanted you to see the application of the trend and how it fits. So there you have it, the trend for electronegativity and uh, electron affinity. Good work.